Hi, everyone. There's nothing behind me. Um, I haven't really done an update in a little while. Uh, we moved. We moved to a new um, place that we we're renting for a year. Uh, we moved to southern Georgia. Um, so far, we like it here. Um, it's a really great neighborhood. Um, kind of neighborhood where you can let your kids go outside and play. We've got uh, woods and like a foresty area right next to us. So my kids have already had their first snake encounter um, and we used it uh, intellectually. We uh, discovered that it was a yellow bellied black snake, not well sometimes mistaken for a cottonmouth or something like that. It was, it's sometimes mistaken for some kind of venomous snake. So then I was like, oh my God, what if we mistook it for the yellow-bellied black snake? But it was actually the venomous one. Uh, luckily, when my daughters, they actually, my oldest daughter actually stepped like, almost right on it. And then it kind of slithered and slithered into a coil. And then my two younger daughters were like, oh my God, snake. And so they ran away and it didn't try to attack or anything like that. So that's good. <sighs> uh, yeah. Um, oh God, there are spiders everywhere. Not in the house, thankfully, but out in the nature, which, you know, there are spiders in nature anyway, but they're so big, so big. There is a, I don't know if you saw on my Instagram, but I took a picture of... Uh, out on our back porch we have a nice sitting area which I'm I was so you know excited to have um, and I have it set up there to drink my coffee or anything because as we were cleaning this, so this house set unoccupied for a little while and as we were outside in the back on that area we were it's a covered back porch with and it's uh screened in and they graciously left this really great um uh, like outside table and chairs there for us which was really nice and everything was covered in spider webs i hate spiders with a with a passion i feel like if a spider has come into my vicinity and i see it it is a spider wishing for death and I will graciously help it to that, in that yeah, manner. Um, and some people are like, oh, you should just capture it and put it outside. No, but we were outside and we were cleaning up all the spider webs and there's this up in the rafters. And then I met the son of Aragog. This spider had to have been that big, like that big. That's big. That's almost the size of my face. That's a little bit smaller than the size of my fist. I could hear this thing whispering to me in spider language. It was saying, okay, so they don't harm Hagrid when Hagrid comes to visit them because Hagrid raised Aragog but he could not in good conscience allow me and my children to get away when fresh meat so so wandered into his vicinity like i was hearing him i'm going to have to look up that exact quote yeah but anyway, so the son of Aragog lives on our back porch. And so for the time being, he is still out there living in his little, living his little spider best life. And I'm sure there are others out there that we missed. Where was I? Oh yeah, no. Anyway, big spider is out there. 
on that patio. And I was really excited about that patio to get out there and drink my coffee in the morning and listen to the birds and sit on the patio and maybe film some videos. But I can't because he is watching me waiting for his time to come down on this little spider web and bite me and fill me with his venomous toxins that will turn my inside to juice. <sighs> okay, so yeah, journaling. Let's talk about journaling. I have been in this same journal for almost two months. I know, that's crazy. It is this B6 Wonderland 222 with oh, Tomo River paper. I love it so much. The graph, the graphing in it is very small, so I'm able to write and fill up a page and fill up a page with what it would take to fill up an A5 lined page. And so I'm, um, and there's 368 pages in here. But I am almost done with this notebook and I will do a completed journal review and flip through as soon as it's done. Um, spoiler alert. I've been doing a lot of fountain pen videos lately and it was because I had a whole bunch of viewers ask me to do them. Um, so I've been doing them. I've been sharing my favorite pen and ink combinations. Um, I'm a, one of those weird fountain penners where when I have the, uh, a pen and an ink that kind of match and I enjoy that combination so much. Now I've had pens and inks that I've matched with, I've pens that I've matched with other inks before that, you know, that match and I didn't like the combination. Um, but these pens that I'm sharing are pen and ink combinations that I love and whenever I ink up those pens, I only use that ink. <sighs> like this. This is a mint Lamy Safari. And I only ink up this pen with Wearing Ghoul Mad Hatter. It's like the perfect combination. I love it. I am on a no pen buying hiatus for a long time. Um, I got three Estabrooks within the past six months. No, my first one was in January. Yeah, in the past six months, I got three Estabrooks and a Lamy Studio. So I feel like that's enough for me for a long time. Um, I still have other pens that I'm curious about. Like I would really like to try an Opus 88. Um, there was the the new Opus 88s that came out and there's one that's like a, um, like, like a really muted mustardy color. I'm curious about that one. That's like right up my, right up my alley. So I'm curious about that one, but I am not going to get it. I am restricting myself. So I'm going to use the pens that I have now and love them. I actually uh, gave my daughter, my 16 year old, who also writes with fountain pens, she uh, got to choose one of my Lammies and there were so many of them. I was like, don't choose that Lammy, don't choose that Lammy. So she chose my uh, Lammy Safari in Savannah. And I was like, okay, I love you. You can have that one. So she has that one. And she also has my Hongdian Black Forest. And so she's enjoying those right now. My two other daughters, they have their own Jen Hao Sharks. And that's good enough for them. Um, I did a couple knitting videos. Um, there was this Sophie scarf that I knit and I was having such trouble starting it out with the I-cord edging on both sides. And as I was figuring out this uh, scarf and then I finished a couple, I was like, you know, there's really no tutorials on this scarf on YouTube. So I did a tutorial for how to start it and it blew up. 
like and by blew up I mean there's like as of right now there's over 17,000 views on it and uh, then I did a video of how to finish it the Sophie scarf and that's got many 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 views as well and then I have uh, viewers who have now subscribed to me because of that those knitting videos and they're asking me for more knitting videos knitting tutorials so that's something I'll be working on as well um, if knitting is not your thing I encourage you to please stay with me um, don't I'm not going to inundate my my uh, channel with knitting videos but those will be coming up um, some people asked uh, for tutorials on specific projects so I am going to be purchasing uh, very specific patterns and as I work through those patterns then I'll be doing tutorials on them as well so that's fun and because uh, I do love knitting I've been knitting for 16 years and so it's one of my passions mental health wise about three months ago I had a episode of I had a manic episode that lasted about a week and a half and it was very scary and but I knew what was happening to me um sometimes before in the past when I've had manic episodes I wasn't aware that I was having an episode uh, it was my family who was aware that something had shifted something had changed and um, this time as it was building up um, I was very aware that it was building up and when I just it just kind of exploded I was able to really it was very difficult but I was able to stop myself from doing this one thing that my mania was really adamant that was the most important thing I could possibly do in my entire life at that moment. And um, which could have, if I had done this thing, it could have ruined my entire relationship with my family. It would have I cannot even describe to you the amount of damage that this thing that my brain was telling me that was the most important thing to do in my entire life would have done and the only way I got through it was every day every day telling myself okay if I still feel this way tomorrow I'm gonna do it if I still feel this way tomorrow I'm gonna do it and just the manic energy and the poor decision making. So I get, I have a certain amount of money every month. And when that money is gone, that money is gone. And because of that, I was able to control that manic, um, that manic spend all the money thing. Um, in the past before oh my god i maxed i one time you know who's i'm being real one time twice in my life i maxed out a two thousand dollar credit card within like a couple of days and i couldn't even tell you what i bought i look back now and there was nothing that i purchased that added to my life at all but I did that, I did that. And it took me a long time to pay those off, um, but I did it. And so this was years ago. So now I, I don't do credit cards. Um, just, that's just a big no, um, because I know that at some point I could go through that again. And I know very well that for me, that's a very slippery slope and I could do that again. So no credit cards. So I have my separate checking account and savings and that's not connected to our main account that goes, you know, we pay all the bills and stuff through. And even though my name is on the account, I do not have a debit card because that's just not safe. <laughs> um, yeah, so 
uh, in this last manic episode, I also drank kind of heavily as well. And I'm not a drinker. Um, I don't drink when I do drink, I don't drink hard alcohol. There's this one wine that I absolutely love. Uh, when I was going through this episode, I I have this big Contigio water bottle, right? Um, I would put ice in the water bottle and literally drain the entire wine bottle into my water bottle and put the lid on with the and I drank the entire bottle and I did that several times. Um, it made me very silly and my face got bright red and just everything was hilarious. Um, and then my husband realized what I was doing. He was like, no, baby, you have to stop. You can't do that. And because I knew what was happening to me, I knew he was right. But that's kind of what I mean when I talk about poor choices. So there's that. Um, and with bipolar disorder, you never know when another, and that's a very tame, oh, a super tame manic episode. It only lasted for like a week and a half. And I think I drank maybe five bottles of wine um, and there was the thing that I was like the most important thing I needed to do. It was like, it was like God told me I had to do this and it was so important, but I knew that if I did that thing, I would ruin everything. And so I kept telling myself, if I still feel this way tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And that was the only way I got through it. I researched it like crazy. I had all this information saved on my phone and I was ready to do it. And I kept telling myself, if I still feel this way tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And eventually I started to come down and I'm so, so glad, so glad that um, I didn't do the thing. Yeah. Because when you are going through those episodes, you are not making um, informed and adult decisions. No, not at all. Um, and of course, I journaled through it too. You know, as I was journaling, you know, I realized what was happening to me. And so I was ferociously writing, 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 writing. And this was, this was before, not long before I started working at Anamoya before we, before we had to move. Um, so I'm just so thankful that I wasn't going through this while I was working because I could have made some very, very, very poor decisions at work that could have got me fired or something, or could have, um, I just could have made some really, really poor decisions. And I'm 41. And the fact, knowing the fact that I go through these is so humiliating and debilitating. And it's just, you know, I'm on great meds, so it keeps these things from happening too often. But before I was on meds, I had manic, manic, and I also, while we were uh, living in the past year, I also went through a very, very, very deep depression as well. And I was on the verge of suicide many, many, many times. And it was my journals that kept me from doing those things. I would love to say it was my family that kept me from doing those things, but it wasn't. It was my journals. And, and that's almost humiliating as well. It should be, you know, the love of your family and how devastated they would be that 
would keep a person from doing something like that, but it wasn't. It was writing it out every single day for hours a day. And then I got to the point where it was so bad that I couldn't even write anymore. I couldn't. It was building up so much that I couldn't write fast enough and I couldn't write it all out. So I stopped and it built up and built up and built up inside me. And that's when I, you know, I almost, there were several times when I knew exactly what I was going to do and I almost did it. But then I was like, let me grab this notebook again and write it out as much as I can. And hours of writing in one spot, I would shut the bedroom door and write as long as I could and get as much of it out as possible. And I did that for a very long time. <sighs> yeah. So that's an update on that note. And this video is so much longer than I wanted it to be. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all of your support. Um, thank you for the ones who have been with me, you know, for so many, so long. I can't thank you enough. Um, and then there are some of you that have reached out over the years and we've become, you know, we've become acquaintances and, you know, friends on Facebook and friends on Instagram. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for you guys too. So... On that note, I will say goodbye, and I will see you in my next video.